Hello guys, so my name is Shreya and today I will be making a video on a little detailed explanation of the COVID-19 uh, which is the pandemic that we are currently going through and I hope this gives you a little bit of an informative session um, and I guess let's move on. COVID-19, the battle goes on. Shreya Kirk. Coronaviruses are a large family of viruses that cause upper respiratory tract illnesses. However, three new coronaviruses have emerged from animal reservoirs that are now causing pandemics. Coronaviruses and closely related proto-viruses are classified together on the basis of their crown or halo-like appearance, which we will find out why, of the enveloped glycoprotein and on characteristic features of chemistry and replication. Sometimes these viruses jump to humans and these are called spillover events. Four of the seven known coronaviruses that sicken people cause only mild diseases. Three can cause more serious or even fatal diseases. SARS coronavirus or SARS-CoV, for example, causes severe acute respiratory syndrome. Middle Eastern respiratory syndrome is caused by the MERS coronavirus called MERS-CoV. The third novel coronavirus to emerge is called SARS-CoV-2. It causes coronavirus disease 2019, also known as COVID-19, which emerged from China in December 2019 and was declared a global pandemic by the World Health Organization on March 11, 2020. The coronavirus are made up of spherical or pleomorphic envelope particles containing single-stranded positive sense RNA associated with a nuclear protein within a capsid comprised of matrix protein. The envelope bears club-shaped glycoprotein projections that are also called spike proteins. The virus attacks human lungs, kidneys, intestines, and the heart. It usually attacks goblet cells and ciliated cells of the lungs. The virus has two receptor binding domains, RBPs, which allow the virus to bind to an ACE2 receptor in the host cell, expanded angiotensin converting enzyme to receptor. The receptor further binds with an amino acid transporter which allows the entry of the virus into the cell. As shown in the PPT, the virus sheds its protein coat and sends the genome into the cell. It forces the host cell's endoplasmic reticulum to first transcribe the viral genome and then translate to produce the proteins. The whole apparatus then moves to the Golgi bodies and the Golgi bodies package it into the new virus body. This body moves out of the host cell by apoptosis. Transmission is via airborne droplets to the nasal mucosa. It is also fomite and airborne at the same time. The epidemiology, which means the study of the virus and its peaking and the statistics, says that it takes place in the winter, taking form of local epidemics that last a few weeks or months, as it is happening right now. Previously known as the Wuhan or coronavirus, this virus is of the aforementioned family of respiratory viruses. It causes the disease COVID-19. Let us make a clear distinction of the name of the virus, which is SARS-CoV-2, and the disease, which is COVID-19. As mentioned before, its spike proteins bind to the ACE2 receptors of the human cells. In fact, they have a strong affinity for them. This mechanism was previously unknown to the scientists. It is also known to bind to the BSG receptor, which is the Bacidrin receptor, which is also the receptor for the malarial parasite Plasmodium vivax. Why do you use soap? You use soap because the soap molecules cause the degeneration of the protective lipid membrane and thus aid in killing the virus. This virus is contagious in humans, that means it cannot spread to other species unless it mutates. The common symptoms of the disease include dry cough, fever, tiredness, and in worse stages, pneumonia. Uncommon symptoms, or some people may also suffer from these, which are aches, nasal congestion, diarrhea, etc. It is often mistaken with rhinitis and flu. There are many misconceptions and myths surrounding the disease that may cause harm if not corrected. 
Mosquito bites, for instance, do not spread the virus. Alcohol consumption does not kill the virus. In fact, it may cause damage to your liver, which is an important component of your immune system. Temperature changes. For example, high temperatures or freezing temperatures do not kill the virus. So all areas throughout the world are prone to getting infected. Antibiotics can only work against bacteria, so they should not be taken without any medical guidance as they cannot kill any virus. Vaccines against pneumonia were developed against Streptococcus pneumoniae, the disease that this, the virus that causes pneumonia, so it won't work against COVID virus. Animals do not spread, are at least not yet known to spread the virus to humans. Like I said, the virus is contained within the humans, so it won't spread to other species unless it mutates. Recovery is possible. So if you're infected, all hope is never lost. This, as you can see, is the world census from 3rd March and cases have spiked since. These 10 are the top 10 worst hit countries by the corona. They are Turkey, Switzerland, United Kingdom, Iran, France, China, Germany, Spain, Italy, and USA. In India, census from 21st April says that there were 17,265 cases, 2,547 recoveries, and 543 deaths, with Maharashtra being worst hit. Usually, the virus follows a certain trend of transmission. It has a lag phase initially where the numbers rise very slow and then there is a very sudden spike. But as you can see in the given graph, with proper control measures, the graph can be de-escalated or more gradual. So how do you prevent getting infected? Preventions are very simple. You have to wash your hands, wear masks, Follow quarantine, regularly clean your clothes and other surfaces, maintain personal hygiene, comply with the rule of social distancing. Most masks are designed to keep the virus from contaminating the air by containing the droplets. The mask will thus protect others provided they are worn properly. People should refrain from wearing respirators or medical grade masks as there may be a shortage to the medical professionals and you may not know how exactly to wear it, thus causing more harm to your respiratory tract. Now, for the treatment. Earlier, a drug named Remedisvir was discovered to stop replication of the virus. A more promising oral drug called EIDD-2801 has shown promising results in test tube experiments with human lung and airway cells. Scientists reported online April 6 in the journal Science Translational Magazine, EIDD-2801 introduces genetic mutations into the virus's RNA. As the RNA makes its copies, so many damaging mutations accumulate that the virus is no longer able to infect the cells. The world's biggest question the doctor are facing right now is the resourcing of ventilators and other hospital equipment. And so patients have been divided into two types, H and L. The type H or high type patients are treated under acute respiratory dis disorder protocol and the L are not. That is because the type H have stiffer lungs and heavier lungs which will respond only to ventilators, whereas the type L will have thin and compliant lungs. Another problem that the medical officials face is that when lungs are stiff, they are not able to be, they are not compliant and hence the person has to be put into an induced coma to let the intubations take place. Intubation is usually the last option. On the brighter side, the environment is seeing positive effects of social distancing. People are on, off the streets and there are very few automobiles and factories working, thus reducing emissions and increasing air and water quality. Observably, animal sightings are seen in the most open and metropolitan spaces. Here are a few helplines. Stay safe, stay protected, stay at home. Thank you.
So I hope that was uh, informative enough. Though this PPT, I will tell you, was made uh, roughly around April or May. So obviously, since then, there have been a lot of changes and a lot of new findings uh, regarding the COVID. But the system of transmission stays the same, which is that it binds the receptor of the virus, which is on the spike protein, binds to the ACE2 receptor of human uh, epithelial uh, lung and um, respiratory tract cells. So I hope that you have gained some kind of uh, information even about wearing masks and how to keep yourself sanitized in these kind of situations. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you next time.